Ladies and gentlemen, come gather in, come gather in, come gather around. Today, we're gonna make a chain ball. Look at that beautiful, gorgeous goodness right there. Oh yeah. Here's what you do. If you don't already have a medieval chain maker of death, this is what it looks like. It's really pretty simple. A couple two by fours, a couple braces in the corners to keep it from going all funky. There's hole drilled in here. This is just a piece of three eighths steel with a little tiny hole drilled in the end I can put wire through. We got a flat bar, looks like it's a quarter by one inch. Holes in the end to fit the bar with a little pin on the end. That's all there is. If I pull this out, looks kind of like so. There's really no magic here. This thing just has a small hole in the end. That's really all there is to it. This goes in like so. This goes in with a pin off to your left. And we're gonna be using some electric fence wire. It's right over here. I've got a spool of 16 gauge uh, galvanized fence wiring. This is what we're gonna make the ball out of. You can make all kinds of chain mail with it. Notice, however, this thing is kind of springy. And if we're using this, look at that. That's already violent, waiting to hurt somebody. So, if you're going to use this, you need to raise your right hand. I promise not to whip my friends in the face with the loose end of the wire. All right, you've promised in the presence of witnesses that you're not going to hurt each other. You hang on to this. When we cut it, we wrap it up, we hang on to this. We don't let go and let it flail around like a mayhem. I'm going to pick you up and flail you around. So, this is how we hook it up. Back in my dancing days, I used to have a disco boogie move that I did, and it was called straight to the left and down. That was my disco boogie move. Straight, left, down. Do it with me. Straight, left, down. Straight, left, down. Straight, left, down. I was the hit of the dance floor. We're gonna do that disco boogie move on here. Here's the wire. Get a nice background on my shirt, my big burly chest. It's gonna come straight. It's gonna go to the left and it's gonna go down. That's what we want. Okay, so it comes out straight, goes off to the left and then goes down. I tried to draw the pictures on here to show you how it sets up, but kids can't seem to read that. I once had a student who was, I was trying to explain something and I said, if I draw a 3D picture for you, would you be able to see it? And he said, oh no, Mr. Wildwood, I have no depth perception. So we put the wire in here. To keep this from popping out, I usually just bend the end over with my finger like that. So it comes up over and that way. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this pin. This pin goes on top just to hold it down. Let's take a close look at that. Here's the wire. It comes up through the hole, over, and then off to the spool underneath that pin. That's kind of important. You're noticing the calculator. When you're crunching big numbers, you need a big calculator. But that's beyond the scope of this lesson. All right, because we don't want to get hurt, we're wearing eye protection because we're not stupid, we're gonna wear a leather glove. Oh my gosh, you should never wear leather gloves. I'm wearing leather gloves. And you're gonna lightly hold the wire and the bar with your left hand, and you're just gonna angle this over, kinda like that. And then we'll pull the trigger on slow speed on the drill, and we get this. Whatever speed you're comfortable with, you need about this much. If you're feeling saucy and you got this, that's probably enough. Now we take the mini bolt cutters and that crazy disco boogie move gives you a line off to the side. That's where we're gonna cut. Here's that disco boogie move. Straight to the left and down. This gives you somewhere to cut. If you didn't put that in because you don't like paying attention to lessons or demos, you're gonna have a hard time cutting that wire. Then we gotta cut this end off Move the stick out of the way, and we can just cut this. And remember, you promised not to whip your friends in the face with the loose end of the wire. So this is what you do. Roll it back up. You'll notice this spool has a whole bunch of holes around the outside, around the outside, 
around the outside. You can poke this through there, bend it over. Ain't no whipping going on. It wants to whip, whip. It's gonna neigh, neigh. Now we have the joyous misfortune of having created a spring. In fact, this is how springs are made. Um, they use them same kind of same kind of thing, just a machine does it, but essentially this is it. You need to cut some links. So I use these mini bullet cutters because they got wee chicken arms and we want to cut these off. Stuff like this, that's junk, I can't use it. The rest, you're going to line up where you've cut it, right on here, and you're going to cut exactly in the same place. The intention is that you get a cut that's kind of still closed. This is a good link. We'll save that one for later. This one is already too open to be of any use. This, garbage. If you're feeling saucy, you can cut two at a time. Ho, ho, ho. Or maybe you can cut three at a time. Ho, 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 ho. Or maybe you can cut four at a time. Oh, who knows? Main thing, you need to cut a whack of these. Uh, I forget what, how many you need to do. It might be like 160. You can check the black book for actual numbers. The set of plans on gwelba.com. But basically, cut a bunch of these up. And I cut them until I'm sick of cutting them. And then I start making them into the chain ball. And when I'm sick of making them into the chain ball, I cut more. And then when I'm sick of cutting, I make some more on the chain ball. So I'm going to cut a whack of these. I also made this design which no kids seem to be able to use. It's just a piece of, looks like inch and a half by quarter with um, maybe a 3 16 roll pin, some 3 8 rod with a slot cut with a hacksaw. And uh, in this case, I would use um, just welding rod, whether it's gas or TIG roll rod. You're going to break off the swedged end with the numbers because we don't really need that. I'm going to wear a glove just because I'm a little chicken. And I set this through here like so. And I put this in the hole like this. And then put this on a slow speed and just give her one of these. But no, no kids seem to be able to do this one. It just buggers it completely. But that's, uh, that's how I'd make these. Next, you're going to want a pair of these pliers. They're bent nose pliers. Get them from Princess Auto. And you need to know a couple things. One, magic comes in threes. Magic comes in threes. And we're going to want five groups of three. What you're going to do is we're going to have a link. We're going to have three links, which is going to have five groups of three coming off of it. So there's three links in the middle with one, two, three, four, five groups of three. Magic comes in threes. This is a center. These are joiners. I'm going to do the centers out of copper and I'm going to do the joiners out of silver. <clears throat> to open these, I usually hold the pliers like this and bend it apart like so. If you bend it apart like so, it will be closable and stay open. If you take this thing and you bend it like this, if you bend it apart to open it, it's no longer round. It's not going to close easily. This one, garbage. So I've got a center and I'm going to put 15 because 3 times 5 is 15. So I'm going to take a bunch of these and close them. You can use pliers. I tend to use my fingers just because it's easy and my fingers are already attached to my hands. You can use whatever. You could use your teeth, but your dentist would probably not approve. Okay, now that you got 15, you put them all on here. Once you got the 15, now you got to close it. That's kind of hard to hang on to with a pair of pliers. So, I put the pliers in the hole like this, and the other pair of pliers in like this, and then I can bend it nice and closed. Make sure it's as closed as you possibly can. 
So now you've got one in the middle. You got five groups of three hanging around the outside. Kind of like a starfish. Okay, there's your five with one in the middle. I got to get three in the middle. For that, we're going to open up one of these. And then you try to weasel it in there, and that's actually a total pain in the butt. But I believe in you. Once you get that in the middle, <coughs> pair of pliers in there, tips down in through the hole, kind of like this seems to be the easiest. Bend it closed. You want to make sure they are as closed and as touching as you possibly can. So now I have two in the middle. We're going to make it three. There's three and Tips of the needle nose pliers going in. Close it. All right. Now, it gets tricky. Put these into groups of three, and we're going to hook three centers through here. So every group of three, these three centers have joiners. Then I'm going to connect centers onto here. All right, at this point, you've got one of these. You got your center with five joiners coming around the outside. Each of the joiners has a center. And what you want to do is think of these as the nose of a bull. And you want to put a ring between his nostrils. Typically, if it's a bull, you're going to have a ring that goes this way into here. If you're joining it like this, that bull is going to eat you because that's not a way you want to get a piercing. If you get your nose pierced like this, you're going to want your money back. It's going to come out of one nostril and go into the other. So back to our original drawing. We did this. We added the three around here. Now we're going to join it together with three. For that, I'm going to use joiners. I can do these with my fingers. So in there and out here, you want it to look like a ring in the nose of a bull. You could grab the bull and pull him by his nostrils. That's why I don't have a piercing like that anymore. People would grab me by it and pull me along. And every once in a while, you want to check and make sure you got this right. I would recommend do one or two and then get me to check it to see if you're on the right path. Okay, so it should start looking like this. All right. At this point, it should look like this, which is kind of looking like that. Okay, you got three in the center, five groups of three coming out of it. We've got, these are the joiners, the copper ones are the centers. I now have centers. There's going to be five groups of three. This one has one, two, three. It will be joining four and five. At this point in this video, this is where I just make another one just like this. And with two of these, I can show you how to knit them together. So let's make a second one. Now we have two. At this point, we knit them together. 
and you want to hold it together kind of like this. And now I want you to look at this, not like the nose of a bull, <clears throat> but an old school gas mask. Here's his eyes and there's his mouth. Okay, we're going to join his eyes to his mouth. So this has one, two, three, four goes over like this. And then this guy will have one, two, three, four, five is going to go over like this. Now this guy has one, two, three, four, five is going to go over like this. Now this guy has one, two, three, four, five is going to go over like this. It's going to zig, zag, zig, zag, zig, zag all the way around. I hope I didn't get off, too, off screen too much. And those will be joiners because it's joining both of these together so I'm going back to the silver links. I'll put a couple together to show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so these are his eyes and that's his mouth. Through the eyes, through one eye, through the mouth. Close it. Next link. Also through the mouth, zagging up to his other eye. Close it. So it's going to look like this. So there's his eyes. One, two, three, four. This one has one, two, three, four. This one now has one, two, three, four, five. This guy's done. We move on to the next one. So we go here. This guy has four. Five is going to go this way. And then he'll have one, two, three, four. Five will go that way. Like this. Okay? Zig, zag, zig. Show you again. Okay? Zig, zag, zig. He's going to zag up to there, from this mouth to that eye. You'll need them to be three. I'm just trying to show you the pattern so you see how it goes across. Joining the two. You'll start to see the pattern, or not, <clears throat> statistically speaking. So I'm going to make these three just because I'm here. My fingers are getting tired, so I'm going back to the pliers. Old man muscle comes with a price. It's called ibuprofen.
All right, the last three are the hardest to get in because there's really no room. But everything is zigzag. This guy only has four. This guy only has four. Five has to go in between. That's annoying, but you can do it. I'll try to do it with pliers so my big mitts don't get in the way. And I try to weasel in those three. Come out those three. And we'll join them together with, oh yeah, three. Now if you made too many links, that's not the end of the world. Somebody probably did not make enough links. It's all about balance. So if you, you know, spread the love, share. Oh, this is not fun. Oh, going in the wrong hole. There we go. When I mark this, I take one mark off for every link that's not closed, tighter than half the thickness of a wire, and any link that's not lined up more than half the thickness of a wire. You have a potential of something in the ballpark of a hot minus 160 out of 30. So it's in your best interest to do them all. I want to give good marks. I'm going to check it over and point you down the path of making it decent. Most kids get around 27 out of 30. Some get 100. Not many get less because I don't mark garbage. And there we have the beautiful chain ball with copper centers, silver joiners, and I'm missing a link. Aha, minus one. What if I fix it right now, Mr. Wellwood? All right, we'll let you do that. But you may only do it while singing Alouette. Alouette, Jean de Alouette, Alouette, Jean de Plumeray. All right, that's enough. You're scaring me. All right, let's give it another look. <clears throat> see if we're missing anything. I want to see five groups of three coming out of every center. Links closed, tight, lined up, nothing missing, not links missing past other links and all sloppy like. This is actually looking pretty good. Oh yeah. Old and busted, new hotness. Chain ball!